the price of freedom. Mother, I'm home. Returnal has always been a game that leaves a lot of things up for interpretation. Solin's journey, intriguing planet Atropos, the mysterious hive mind and several civilizations, and many more details are hidden as clues in different story arcs of the game. But it seems that the Saharian Memorial Hospital and the Ascension DLC go on an opposite path, beginning to narrow all of our previous interpretations with new clues that are scattered with each visit of Selin to the hospital. In this final video of the Deep Dive series for Returnal, I'm going to present to you what I think is my new favorite Returnal Timeline Explainer theory, one that goes under a very dark path, but thanks to the new audio logs, cinema archives, and other clues available in the new Ascension DLC, shines a brand new light on Celine's case, getting us one step closer to a possible ultimate truth. Celine is a murderer. Take into consideration that this theory doesn't bash any of the other theories that all of you lovely PlayStation fans have left in the comments of my previous Returnal videos. It is in fact just one more theory by a guy that loves this game. And that is the beauty of the story of Returnal, a journey that is open to interpretation from start to finish, time and time again. I know this is our last video for Returnal, but if you've enjoyed any of the previous videos for this game, be sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming PlayStation Studios documentaries that I will be publishing ahead this year for some of your other favorite PlayStation IPs like The Last of Us, Horizon, God of War, and more. But without further ado, this is what led Sling to become a murderer. late 1950s, Thea Vassos was an honor student in sophomore math in what we can assume was a local college within the Okanagan County in Washington. Thea had a bright academic future, a deep interest in astronautics, and excelled as an athlete in local swimming competitions. When the time came, Thea decided to successfully apply for a position within Astro Corporation, which can be confirmed thanks to Audiolog 91, where Celine is facing a recruitment process and a former colleague of her mother asks what she meant for her. Sometime after being accepted, which could be months or even years, Thea met her partner, Hyperion, and eventually got pregnant with their first child, Celine. Strangely, there is no mention of Hyperion anywhere in the game except for Audiolog 42, referring to him as someone who played the organ and climbed to the very top of the throne of exaltation achieving clarity in madness, a reverence to mental illness, a recurring theme in the game. The only thing we can assume for now is that he was part of Celine's and Thea's life for a while until he departed to an unknown destination, shortly after Thea got pregnant with Celine's little brother, Helios. We talked about this brother and sister relationship during the mythology video in the Deep Dive series, but we were missing a couple of extra hints from the developer, and now we finally have them. This brotherhood is implied in a couple of very subtle ways. The first, during the Act 3 ending and the first hospital ending, where we can see Thea clearly pregnant, and inside the audio log 78, where Celine talks about her pregnancy and how she's already made up her mind about the name for her own son. She would be using a name from one of her family members. Yes, it is possible that Celine may have an extended family, but the other only family member we know really exists or existed in the Returnal universe besides Thea and Hyperion is this unborn baby, which is very likely that he turns out to be her brother. To take this theory one step further, in Greek mythology, Celine and Helios are brother and sister which now makes much more sense instead of them being mother and son as it is originally presented in the game, but more of that in a moment, because we need to go back to Hyperion. Although his whereabouts are unknown, there could be a big hint on where he left on the front page of the Okanogan Herald found inside the Saharian Memorial Hospital, where one of the main stories reads, Local man 
joins the space program. Even when it would be too much of a coincidence for two people of the same county to make the bid to join the Astro Corporation, it is a possibility, especially if both of them knew each other from the same sophomore math class and shared the same set of skills and interests in astronautics. But in order to be certain about this, we still need more information about Hyperion's past, and I'm counting on Housemark with one last story DLC for the game focusing on this mysterious character. With Thea now being a single mom and expecting a second child, stress indeed was on the rise and her relationship with her daughter took a bad turn, clearly reflected in some of the posters found in Sahari Memorial Hospital with phrases like, you were an accident and you were a bad child, which were probably repeated by Thea over and over during Celine's upbringing. This abuse was only the beginning and got even worse after the most impactful event in Returnal's timeline. The car crash that took place on the Okanagan Wenatchee Bridge. Funny enough, two instances of the car crash are supposed to take place in Returnal. The first one, when Celine was a child, and the second one, when she is an adult. And here is when I've decided to take a risk and finally give in to the theory Thea and Celine, even when they share a lot of things in common, are in fact two separate individuals instead of the same person. Let me explain why. In the beginning, I thought, like many of you, that Celine and Thea could be the same, but after finishing the Ascension DLC, unveiling both endings and uncovering all the new audio logs and scene archives, I believe this is meant in a more symbolical way, where mother and daughter repeat the same mistakes throughout their lives. There's an old saying that goes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and that's why Celine gets heterochromia and changes her haircut after the car crash, as a subconscious reminder of Thea's same mistakes years ago, now being Celine the one failing in her journey through motherhood. There are also some other clear insights on each of their personalities and timelines to make the case that they are separate individuals, like the multiple memories Celine recalls with the audio logs during the whole game, with clear descriptions of her feelings towards her mother. Another very subtle example is their favorite flowers, featured during the cutscene at the end of Act 1 and the Ascension DLC. Thea loves poppies, found in the house garden and gather as we ascend the Tower of Sisyphus. While Celine's favorites might be either red roses or white lilacs. And by the way, a big shout out to my friend How Hunter for helping me figure out the name of these flowers. We also have a very clear understanding of Thea's hobbies, specifically swimming, revealed thanks to the newspaper cutout found on the hospital's corkboard and inside Audiolog 95, where Celine describes her mother's trips to a pool after the car crash and how peaceful Thea was there. But Celine is more of a mystery. And besides her deep love for science, books, and her own career, the only sign of a hobby we can find for her is the love of her car and traveling, portrayed in this photo near the music box inside the house, and with music, hinted by her love for the 1976 hit song Don't Fear the Reaper by the famous American rock band Blue Oyster Cult, which is played on the radio during the Act 2 ending and the fifth house visit. With that said, let's take a look at both car crashes. There is a very important clue inside Audiolog 85 where Celine gives us a clear indication of the duality of these crashes. She says, the crash. I always return to the crash. The moment of creation. Mine and hers. Shattered. Both of us. Blown apart. Both seeking atonement. Both craving. Forgiveness. If we take into account that Thea was pregnant during her first car crash, we can clearly identify that Celine's car crash is the one shown at the end of Act 2, thanks to a couple of details. Thea was an astronaut of the Apollo era during the 1960s, and the car model that is shown in the cutscene seems to me that it belongs to a 1990s or 2000s period, reinforced by the presence of the digital display on the radio which is another hint of the time period. 
the US car crash is the one that is shown in the news on the TV and in the newspaper for a couple of reasons. The clearest of them is the mention of the name Thea before one of the rough transitions between news reports. The driver is Thea, the collective. The driver is Thea, the collective. But there is also the newspaper that describes her major spinal cord injuries that we can witness for ourselves thanks to all the references to the wheelchair throughout the story and the hospital sequences. There is also the mention of a child missing, but was later found unharmed. Her daughter miraculously survived unharmed. Which contrasts with Helios being clearly unconscious inside the car, and most importantly, a medical report with a curious detail that states that Thea's injuries, and I quote, were exacerbated by attempts to free passengers and return them to safety. And I want to emphasize the word passengers, because as one of the latest comments in the hospital ending video has brilliantly noticed, there is a part of the newspaper article in the Okanagan Herald that makes a very important annotation, and that is, there was a second child that was found in the scene. This is intentionally deleted from the transcripts shown when you read the newspaper, and there's never another mention of this child later in the game. At first, I thought about Helios being the third passenger, but given the fact that this would make him survive the crash, we would later have a further reference to him in the story, which doesn't happen. So my only guess left is to assume that this extra passenger is not important to the story at all. Maybe he or she was a friend of Celine because if he or she had more relevance in the timeline, he would be mentioned sometime again. But there is no single word or phrase in any audio log or clue inside the hospital that makes this third passenger someone to pay attention to. But I might be wrong here, only the future will tell. So let's continue with the car crash. My theory is that while Celine's car crash occurred in the middle of the bridge, Thea's car crash probably took place in either the starting or closing segments of the bridge, and most likely during a time of the day where the traffic in the area was more frequent. This would explain the attempts to free Thea and Celine, who probably got rescued first and, in the middle of a panic attack, escaped the scene only to get lost in the forest with three pieces of evidence supporting this. The first, when Celine finds a surf belt on the final house visit, she says this phrase. Did I unlatch this? Second, this poster at the hospital that reads, you should have drowned. And finally, the drawings of the hospital. I previously explained in the hospital secrets video that most of these drawings were the same that appear in Helios' room. But there are a couple of new ones, and those are the ones of a lonely girl. It is my belief that Celine was brought to the hospital here after she was found wandering in the forest, and these drawings were a means of her subconscious to portray what happened to her before and after the car crash. The first drawing found during the second hospital visit shows a happy family of three, a girl, her mother, and a boy, with his face scribbled all over with black ink. The mother is Thea, the boy, Helios, and Celine, the little girl. In the second drawing, the girl wakes up alone, with her mother and brother missing. She searches for them in the woods, but never founds them. This should be the moment when she unlatched the seatbelt, escaped, and got lost in the nearby forest. And finally, the third drawing is a two-part story. In the first, she is getting called out by a faraway voice. This is the moment when she finally is found by the police that might be looking for her in the forest, and she then goes to the hospital to reunite with her mother, where we can see all of the drawings and kids' toys lying around, and those will make much more sense to be later in Hideo's room, as they were passed down to him by her own mother. Now, from the moment of the car crash, Celine went from being a girl with perhaps a normal childhood to one suffering an unbearable reality. As Celine has clearly stated in multiple audio logs, the posters from the hospital, and fragments from the story in Returnal, probably as a consequence of her own bad behavior as a child, Thea was relentless in shaming and abusing her daughter, no matter what Celine did to gain her love and respect. This included high expectations that were never met, the desire to actually see her daughter fail constantly, and 
a lack of interest in any of her achievements during her academic and personal life. This is the beginning of a series of mistakes that Celine made to try to fill the void created by her mother's despise, being the first one, and probably the most crucial for the development of the story, to join the ranks of Astra. After years of abuse, Celine had her first chance to break free from her mother's grasp once she finally started attending college, hindered by Audio Log 92. She called me three times a day after I left. Never asked about my studies or my friends, or my partners, my dreams. Every word was a complaint. She was bored. She was in pain. She was disappointed. <laughs> Always disappointed. Her hand on my throat, even hundreds of miles away. I know she was lonely, scared, but she should have let me go. The curious thing here is who was left in charge of Thea while Celine was gone. Given her delicate condition, she couldn't be all by herself. Did Hyperion come back? Was she left in a nursing home? Even when these gaps are not covered at all by either the story or the lore, it is clear that Celine had to go back someday to continue to take care of her mother, something that she deeply regretted and was clearly stated during the hospital multiple times. But then, not clear if it was before or after graduating or joining Astra, Helios was born. The identity of the father of Helios is completely unknown, but Audiolog 78 clearly states that Selene and him were together until some point before the 20 weeks of her pregnancy, when she refers to her missing partner. And here is where another funny detail begins to rise. We have already established a very symbolic but strong duality between Thea and Selene, but this also works when Helios comes into Selene's life. Having a child is a big responsibility, especially as a single mother, something that bore heavy on the mind of Celine. And she speaks about it during the fourth hospital visit while staring at an incubator outside the nursery. This connection between Helios, Celine, and Thea is further reinforced by one of the posters in the hospital that reads, You were a bad child, you had a bad child, and you will not have a child. As expressed in Audiolog 81, the wild and stubborn behavior from Helios and her own lack of control mimicked what she had experienced before with her mother. She was beginning to repeat the same mistakes as her, falling under her shadow not only as a professional, but as a mother. Even when Celine did her best, Helios had a complicated upbringing too. Yes, despite being such a brat, Helios had a lot of love and admiration for her mother reflected on him naming his astronaut Captain Daggerton. But even when there is no tangible evidence of physical abuse towards him, probably the psychological aspect was the one that affected him more directly. With Selim being a member of Astra, working for hours and coming home late, Helios and Thea developed a strong relationship that got the worst out of Selim. Clearly voiced by Selim during the second hospital ending and the poem found in Thea's room by the book. Thea's only child. And if we take a moment to think about the loss that Thea had suffered of her own son Helios in the previous car crash, this makes all the sense in the world. A mother reunited with her child in the form of her grandson. But this came with a price. And this is where the darkest point of the timeline arrives. As we have seen, jealousy started to take over Celine. In vengeance for her mother's physical and psychological abuse, she began to pay her back with a taste of her own medicine, locking Thea on a regular basis in the basement and beating her up. This went on for an undisclosed amount of time, but only paved the way for Celine's final plan, one that went too far but was clearly the only possibility, at least on her mind. The price of freedom. As she sincerely stated on one of the hospital visits, after reading the police report for one of the events that has been kept under the shadows by the developer Housemark until the release of this DLC. 
the house fire. Celine, in a desperate, selfless, and manic action, burned her own house with Pia inside. The clues for this come not only from the police report, but from the senior archives found inside the Tower of Sisyphus. This is my theory of how it happened. Celine started the fire after giving Pia one final strike to the head. After locking her inside the basement as usual, the stress of the whole situation was noticed and quickly reported by an anonymous individual as read in the police report. Celine then entered into a state of panic after realizing what she had done and the consequences of her actions, passing out probably near the exit or outside her home, where Helios tried to make her regain consciousness, which he succeeded. The police arrived almost immediately to find Celine waiting outside and smoking, in a state of apparent distress. Unable to tell them what occurred, the officers decided to call the fire department when they saw a blaze inside the house, while Helios and Celine were transported to the hospital where she received treatment while her son waited for her with his best buddy Octo, which would explain the presence of all his drawings in the waiting room. Celine then recovered and they were discharged from the hospital. Sadly, Theo's corpse was found too late. As the autopsy performed 12 hours later stated the cause of death was traumatic encephalopathy with a series of combined effects, we can only make our best guess to be related to either carbon dioxide poisoning or oxygen deficiency. And then, as Celine sat in her car, trying to process all that had happened, wandering aimlessly through the forest, the disaster of the Okanagan Wenatch Bridge strikes again, with a white shadow appearing and forcing the car crash to the bottom of the lake. This is the exact moment where the timeline opens and all of my other previous ending theories, as well as the ones that you have shared in the comments for all their videos, coexist. This is the big bang of Returnal Sending. The one you decide to believe will always be the best option. Until the very day when Housemark, the developers of the game, decide to reveal the truth for all of us to witness. And with this, my friends, we've come again to the end of the videos for Returnal. As always, I'd love to hear what you think about this theory, no matter if you agree or disagree with all or most of it. Share your opinion and theories in the comments section down below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel or even considering supporting via Patreon for a free day early access to any upcoming video that I will produce here in the channel, as well as other cool perks. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later on the visa.